Most myths have a hint of truth or common sense to them. Since they sound like they should be true, few people think to question or verify the accuracy of the myth. Here, however, are 10 common myths that have been debunked. It's a lovely day at the beach. That is, until your friends start splashing and screaming. They've been stung by a jellyfish. You help them out of the water. As they lay on the sand trying not to cry from the pain, you stand over them and pull down your board shorts. Stop right there. We're putting an end to this gross myth once and for all. Number 10. Peeing on a jellyfish sting stops the stinging. Peeing on a jellyfish sting does not stop the stinging. Actually, urine can worsen symptoms by aggravating the stinging cells the jellyfish left behind on the victim's skin and causing them to release more venom. Rinsing the sting area with vinegar will greatly lessen the pain. Then use tweezers to remove any tentacles. Then the sting area should be soaked in hot water. If there's no vinegar handy, rinsing a jellyfish sting with seawater is better than nothing, but stay away from using urine. Our next myth is scientifically impossible, but you might have heard it from your mom or grandma. Number 9. Don't go outside with wet hair, you'll catch a cold. It's simply not true. Colds are caused by viruses, which are transmitted through exposure to virus-causing germs, which often spread through bodily fluids. Sick people sneezing, coughing, and spitting releases respiratory droplets into the air, and they may end up on surfaces. Touching surfaces that are teeming with virus-causing germs and then touching your mouth or nose transfers those germs into your system. We still don't suggest going out in the cold with wet hair, though. Not only can it be uncomfortable, it's actually bad for your hair. Hair is more fragile when wet, and cold weather can exacerbate hair breakage. Water molecules, which have penetrated the hair shaft, will expand as they freeze, which can cause the hair to stiffen and snap. Freezing water molecules also lift the cuticle and leave the hair exposed to environmental damage. Some of us have tried myth number 8, equally fascinated and horrified at the possibility of it actually working. Number 8. A penny dropped off a skyscraper can kill a person below. Several different groups have done experiments testing this myth, and it's simply not true. Pennies and, in fact, all coins are aerodynamically unstable and tumble as they fall. The flat surface of a coin is conducive to air pushing up on it, which limits acceleration. Pennies fall to the ground at approximately 25 miles per hour. Being hit by a penny dropped from a skyscraper feels like being hit by a casually tossed pebble. An ordinary item actually dangerous to drop off a skyscraper is a metal ballpoint pen with a shirt clip. The clip acts as a fletching on an arrow and keeps the pen pointed down. The aerodynamics of the pen can cause it to accelerate to around 190 miles per hour. When the pen hits, it slams into a small area with a lot of momentum. It could quite possibly punch a hole in a human head. Myth number 7 only seems true because of the physical discomfort that can occur if you disobey the myth. Number 7. Wait at least 30 minutes to go for a swim after eating. Supposedly after eating, the blood diverted to your digestive tract steals the blood needed to keep your arms and legs pumping during swimming, making you more likely to drown. Your body does supply more blood into your digestive system after eating to process a meal. However, it's not enough blood that can prevent your arms and legs from functioning properly, so no, you don't need to wait before going for a swim. However, it's possible to get cramps, especially if you swim when you're very full. Our next myth is semi-true, but not for the reason people think. Number 6. Chameleons change color to camouflage themselves and hide from predators. Most chameleons are born with skin that mimics the colors and details of their native habitat, so they have a tendency to blend in. Chameleons do actually change colors, but generally it's to maintain a comfortable body temperature as they cannot generate their own body heat, so a cold chameleon might become dark to absorb more heat. Too hot, a chameleon might turn pale to better reflect the sun's rays. Chameleons also alter their coloring to communicate with other chameleons. Males might become bright to signal their dominance. To signal ownership of territory or while fighting for a mate, male chameleons may turn dark. Females can let males know that they're ready to mate by altering their color. Some chameleon owners learn to read their pet's mood based on the color of its skin. However, videos or images that show chameleons changing colors as they encounter different surfaces or changing colors to match patterns such as a chessboard are fake. We're not sure how our next myth got started, but fish are a lot smarter than humans think they are. Number 5. Fish, especially goldfish, only have a 3 second memory. Of course goldfish look bored swimming around a tiny bowl, wouldn't you? Studies by scientists suggest that goldfish and other fish have memories that last much longer than 3 seconds. They have memories of around 5 months. During one study, scientists spent a month trying to train young fish in captivity to associate a certain sound with feeding time. Then the fish were released into the wild. Some 5 months later, the scientists played the sound and the now adult fish showed up looking for food, having remembered the sound. 
Other experiments have been done with training goldfish to complete obstacle courses or associate a certain color with food. A bonus myth about goldfish, goldfish can be kept in bowls. Actually, no fish should be kept in a small bowl without filtration or aeration systems. If you do so, you shorten the life of the fish and the size that they'll grow to. When healthy and having access to good water quality and space, a goldfish never stops growing. That's why in the wild a common goldfish is capable of growing to 10 pounds. We were rather disappointed to find out that our next myth isn't true because an animal that could shoot stingers from its butt would be awesome. Number 5. Porcupines can shoot their quills long distances. Sadly, this myth is an exaggeration of a porcupine's powers. The North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills, each one adorned with between 700 and 800 barbs along the 4 millimeters nearest its tip. These barbs help the quills remain embedded in a victim's skin. However, the quills are not shot. A victim must come into contact with the porcupine for the quills to be released. As the quills easily detach and the barbs help it stick in your flesh, it's still not in your best interest to go near a porcupine. We're glad to find out that myth number 4 isn't true. Number 4. Humans swallow 8-10 to 10 spiders a year while sleeping While it's possible to eat a spider while sleeping, especially if you sleep with your mouth open, it's unlikely. Spiders have no interest in humans. When they spin a web and take up residence in your home, it isn't because they're craving human company. In North America, there are around three or four species of spiders that are most likely to invade your home, and they do so because they found a safe spot that they feel has great potential for catching prey. When spiders go exploring or hunting for food, they're unlikely to crawl into bed with humans. An important part of a spider's sensory data is vibrations. Humans give off plenty of them while they sleep via heartbeat and breathing. Spiders are far more interested in avoiding the huge vibrating lump rather than exploring it. If you sleep with your mouth open, you're likely snoring, which gives the spider yet another reason to avoid you. Finally, if something crawls on your face, chances are you'll feel it and wake up before it reaches your mouth. Countless crime drama TV shows are responsible for our next myth. It's often used as a dramatic plot device, but it's wrong. Number 3. You must wait at least 24 hours before filing a missing persons report. You don't need to wait 24 hours to file a missing persons report. In fact, there's no time period anyone must wait before filing the report. The sooner you notify the police, the better. Taking action within the first 48 hours is often vital to locating and bringing a missing person home safely. Speaking of police, myth number 2 is a little far-fetched but probably rooted in the fact that police are seen as heroic and having to follow a particular moral code since they enforce the law. Number 2. In the US, undercover police have to disclose that they're police if you ask. Utterly false. The point of an undercover cop is to gather data and build a case against an individual or organization for criminal behavior. This process involves a lot of resources, money, labor, surveillance. No way is an undercover officer going to tell you they're a cop if it could jeopardize the operation. In fact, strategic lying is specifically a part of going undercover. Sometimes an undercover law enforcement officer will commit illegal activity to reinforce their cover identity and prove that they're definitely not a cop. An undercover cop participating in illegal activity with you or encouraging you to perform illegal activity is not considered entrapment. Entrapment only occurs when an officer gets someone to commit a crime they had no intention of committing or wouldn't likely normally commit. For example, if an undercover cop convinced a nonviolent criminal who has a record of shoplifting to help with an armed robbery. Otherwise, undercover cops are free to lie about whether they're a cop and just about anything else. Our final myth highlights a dilemma nearly everyone in the world has experienced at some point. Number 1. The 5 Second Rule It's safe to eat food that's been on the floor for 5 seconds or less. Obviously, this myth is dependent on the what and where. If you drop the cheese sauce covered nachos you just purchased on the floor of the convenience store, it's better you let them go. But what if you drop a cookie on your regularly cleaned kitchen floor? Is the 5 second rule true? If you choose to snatch up that cookie and eat it, you're in good company. In a survey of 2,000 people, 79% or 1,400 admitted to eating food that had fallen on the floor. We'd actually call this myth inconclusive. There have been many experiments done to determine how true this myth is. In addition to how moist the surface of the dropped food item is, how dirty the floor is, and the length of time the food is on the floor, the type of floor surprisingly made a big impact as to how dirty the dropped food got. Researchers discovered that carpet has a low transfer rate, while ceramic tile, wood, and stainless steel flooring have a much higher transfer rate. But no matter how quickly you snatch it up, once any food item comes into contact with the surface, it will pick up some type of bacteria. Sure, you can brush off any visible dust, but unfortunately it's not possible to sanitize dropped food. This occurs even when the floor is clean. 
No matter how clean a floor is, it still has bacteria. Chances are a floor cookie isn't going to kill you or even make you sick. But you are playing Russian roulette with eating some gross germs. And now that you reached the end of our video, why not keep the watch party going? It's a myth that we use only 10% of our brains. We actually use 100%, but different areas activate at different times. What if you used 100% of your brain at the same time? Click here to find out. Check out insane, interesting, and funny 15-second facts you didn't know.